All righty, market update here on the 7th. Let's get into SPY here. So I didn't do a video after the market closed on Friday. Friday was kind of uh, a little bit, I honestly, like the first couple hours I was trading a little bit, but nothing, nothing too much. And I went to bed pretty much a couple hours into the market and woke up hour before to see that nothing had really happened. So there is a few stocks that went like Meta went up big. I already sold out of Meta um, a little bit too early, but um, Meta went up big and SPY obviously 0.58%, QQQ up 1%. But after the first couple of hours, it was pretty much finished, the move. So let's go ahead and go over SPY. Like I said in the last video, I'm looking for 557 minimum. We have... On the hourly, you can see it pretty well. I think there's a good chance that we're going to start um, some consolidation for a fourth wave on Monday. And then another move higher after that. 557 is a minimum target. Uh, if we draw, let's see here. If we draw a parallel line, actually right here. This is the outer line we're looking for. To hit so I don't know how high it's gonna go but 557 is a minimum and pretty much what I've been saying the whole time we're in a fifth wave as soon as this finishes I'm looking for a big pullback let's say it goes to 560 I'm looking for a pullback into the election probably down to like 510 520 unless somehow this extends so we'll see what happens with that. Um, QQQ, exact same. Last video, I said I was looking for 495. We hit that. Probably looking for consolidation. Um, it's pretty overextended on the hourly. So maybe consolidation over a couple of days. And then another move higher, up to 500. So nothing really else to talk about on those two. Tesla, up 2% again. Um, so in the Tesla video I did last time, I said there was a good chance it topped out. Um, you can see here I got the parallel line from the bottom to the second wave here. And uh, we have not crossed outside of that. We haven't touched it either. The move down on Friday was corrective, not impulsive. So we got, let's go in a little bit farther. So we got A, B, C, and then we get a big move up, or a move up here, impulse move. Pull back here, did not break the low. It's possible it goes higher here. Maybe it will come up here and break the parallel line on Monday. Like I said, going on these smaller time frames, it's hard to tell exactly the count sometimes. It's possible it does this. But really, the one thing I'm watching is just are we going to break this parallel line or not? So if they break this parallel line, we've already broke the 1.61 fib. So they break the parallel line too. Then I'm leaning towards it being a third wave. If it falls short of that and consolidates down here to 230, then um, there's a chance it's still ABC. And then that would be this scenario right here. The ABC scenario that I've been talking about. But if it breaks the parallel line, let's say we go up here to like 265, pull back, there's a chance we're going to get this move up here to 350, like I talked about for the diagonal. So just like that. This can come back down here into the first wave. So anyway, those are two scenarios for Tesla. Um, just watching the parallel line, and that's pretty much it. Let's go over NVIDIA. So NVIDIA, I had talked about, I sold actually on Thursday. I sold in this area right here. I sold maybe a little bit too early, a dollar or two early, but the reason I sold is I didn't really like the structure here. You can see here, 
We come nowhere near the parallel line. This is like basically coming back into this wave right here. So overall, I'm leaning towards this being potentially this. Down here to 116 to 112. Potentially down here to 106. That's kind of what I'm looking for. Um, it's possible it goes higher here. It hasn't necessarily um, invalidated this as a fifth wave. It could do this. But even if it does that, I'm still leaning towards this just being like a B wave or a second wave. More than likely a B wave. And then this would come down farther. Uh, let's zoom out here and just see if this is possibly, if we can go down lower for a fourth wave. So if this is the overall third wave. Like 106 wouldn't even be that big of a deal. It would still only be a little bit past the 0.23 fib. So NVIDIA, I'm leaning towards more downside on Monday. Another reason why the market might sell off a little bit. Um, could it be the start of a bigger move down? I'm looking at this as ABC. I'm not looking at it as an impulse move. So really the 1.61 fib is the max I could see it falling. That's right around 106. So 106 potentially, let's get a range here. 106, 107, if it goes to 134, then I'd be looking for potentially this 112. But I don't really see this as a bull move right here. You can see how many different corrective moves are in here. So if this were impulse move, I would look for this. You know, something more straight up. Instead, we went a little bit sideways and now we're coming back down. It doesn't look very impulsive to me. So. That's the video. I'm actually looking for downside on the video. Um, let's go over Meta, which went, went straight up. I said in the last video, there's a potential that this is a nested move, and that's exactly what happened. Um, so one, two, one, two, three, four, and five is what it looks like to me. So Meta is right on pace with SPY and um, QQQ. So I'd be looking for a pullback now on Meta. Assuming that's done. And then another move higher like that. A few videos ago, I told you 555 was my target. We're headed right there. How did I know that? Even though I sold early, I sold like... I sold... Some down here, some right here. I missed the move, unfortunately. But on Friday, I wasn't really trading that much. And it had already moved, and I was like, I'm not chasing that. So um, how did I know that? Well, this first wave, the length of it. I, I said there was a potential that this was a fifth wave, really weird fifth wave. But honestly, this was pretty much an ABC move. And then you put this down here at the bottom, my target right here, 557. So um, we'll see what happens with Meta, but I'm expecting probably a little bit of consolidation after that 5.87% move. And then after that, another big move higher. So everything is tracking exactly um, as it should be for these to top out here later in July. Um, Microsoft. Just going higher. Um, I think it's still got more to, more to go. I think it can go all the way up here to potentially 496. And so we'll see what happens with it. Um, it's our it's another like seven eight percent. So Meta and Microsoft are pretty bullish on Apple. And Apple's all the way at 226 now. So. This nested move on Apple is working out pretty well. Let's see where it's at. So Apple and Meta, probably about the same place. One, two, three, four, five. 
So I'm ready for some consolidation next week, and then another move higher into OPEX, basically. And then after that, we should get a pretty big sell-off. Uh, what else are we looking at here? Um, Palantir, still going higher. Um, it did enter into a supply zone here. So if the market consolidates, um, I wouldn't expect it to come down probably. Now that it's already up here at 27, but it is in a uh, supply zone here. I was looking at the potential of this being right here and then going up the lot like kind of like that but um, I don't know we'll see what happens with Palantir I still think it's going to 31 like I've been talking about for a while um, I just don't know the exact pattern if we pull back in the market I don't think this is going to lose I guess it can lose 10% we pull back in the market decently hard and then go up higher we'll see what happens but palantir is going to 31 um mara oh amd so amd so i've been talking about this move for a long time now it's finally taking place another um another sign that the market is getting ready to top out because i've been talking about in the videos this is the abc move a like that we finally started that third wave here so based on this i would say that the market might start green on monday and then we're going to sell off because this has a little bit more to go to 175 pull back and another move higher if it goes to 175 let's say it pulls back to 171 then you're looking at a move from 171 all the way up to one eighty five to one ninety is my target on AMD. So a little bit high higher on Monday, pull back, another move higher. Um let's see here. Anything else I want to talk about in this video? Uh, not really. Let's look at Black Box and just see what was going on on Friday. There wasn't a lot, I don't think. I really recommend this if you want to pay. It's like, it is like a hundred bucks a month, but it comes super handy. It just verifies that you're on the right track with your technical analysis. And, uh... Okay, flow from Friday, over 500,000 above the ask. So you're seeing tons of puts. IWM is probably going to sell off here. SPY is getting a lot of puts. Microsoft, huge call. Tons of puts. I also saw a VIX call worth $5 million. So another sign that we're getting close to a big correction. Um, puts, tons of puts. Um, QQQ puts, IWM puts, 525 puts. They do a pretty good job on these spy puts to make different strikes. Um, and on these, the IV isn't really moving, so you can't get any, get any reads off that. But um, the only thing I really saw were Tesla calls. But then again, those Tesla calls happened early in the day. So it's hard to tell if that was for a continuation next week. Or if they already got rid of those, it was down at 245, went all the way to 251. So I don't know on that. I didn't see any calls at the end of the day. Um, Meta had all kinds of calls coming in. Um, IWM, tons of puts. Someone's slamming those puts. So that does not look good for IWM. The only put on Tesla I saw was right here. That was early in the day. So Tesla looks pretty bullish to me. We'll see what happens. I keep on selling short-term puts on it because I don't think it's going to sell off hard anytime soon. Um, probably after OPEX. So not really a lot to go over on this right here. I usually do over 500,000 because I don't care about anything below 200,000. And above the ask means that they are buying the position 
they're buying for what, what it is. So like if they're buying a put, that means they're bearish. Buying a call, they're they're bullish. So I think that's pretty much it. Um, you have a NVIDIA call here. You don't have any NVIDIA puts. Um, one thing though that I did notice, I do use this sometimes, but only to verify, um, like on NVIDIA here, I'll look at it because NVIDIA had tons of calls, uh, millions here. They're not above the ass though. That's probably someone selling them, I would imagine. They could be buying them too, but that's more, um, I think they'd be buying above the ask. So just a little way I use black box to confirm positions. But then again, you do have some times where you'll see above the ask and then the stock falls or does the opposite. So you do have to verify with the chart and then the chart you verify with the black box. So anyway, that's my little uh, spiel about black box. I'm going to leave it at that. Um, leave me a comment. Let me know if there's any stocks you want me to look at. And I'm ready for the market next week. Ready to make some more money. Hopefully you guys are too. I will talk to you in the next video.